Shalom, shalom, family. Uh, glad to be back with you. Both my husband and I have been going through some a uh, few physical problems, but we're thankful that we're on the mend, and uh, hopefully we can get back to a regular schedule. Okay, so we're going to start out with prayer, and uh, we're just going to invite our wonderful, wonderful father to just pour his ruah out upon us so that the uh, so that what is taught and said would be from him. Abba, you are Abba Yahuwah, we come to you. And first, we love you. We praise you. We bless your name. And we, we bless you with all of our souls and all that is within us. We bless your holy name. We bless Yahuwah. And forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our iniquities and who heals all our diseases, who redeems our lives from destruction and crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth uh, is renewed like the eagles. Hallelujah. Father, give us hearing ears and give us seeing eyes. And, and we ask that you will give us receptive hearts. Help us where we're weak. Strengthen us in the, in the categories that we are weak. We want to please you. Make us who you want to be. We love you with all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our strength in Yahusha's mighty name. So be it, hallelujah, hallelujah. Okay, so let us share the screen and we're going to start. Alrighty. Okay, and we are going to do a teaching on healing in our exodus. Healing in our exodus. So let's... Um, Start the slideshow, and we're going to play from the start. Hallelujah. And I hope and I pray that you all have been well and doing well The cold, from the cold weather to the higher temperatures today and yesterday. We were able to go outside with um, a thin jacket, and but the days before that, it was freezing cold. But anyway, we praise y'all that we are alive and well to see the changes in the weather. And he knows what he is doing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right. So uh, our first teaching is, how did we come out in the first Exodus? Now, um, the reason why we're talking about this tonight is that history tends to repeat itself uh, when it comes to us, uh, Yah's chosen people, and and our relationship with uh, Abba Yah. And so it has happened before, and it will probably happen again. All right, so let's look at uh, Psalms 105, uh, verses 37 through 40. All right, and, and it reads, He, Yahuwah, brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Now, this is what's going to happen when he brings us forth, we're, uh, we are going out with silver and gold. Isn't that wonderful? They can call it reparations if they want, uh, but we are going out just like our ancestors came out with all of the treasures of, of Egypt. And the same thing is going to happen. All right. And verse 38, Egypt was glad when they departed 
for the fear of them fell upon them. And this same thing is going to happen it, uh, with this nation, this uh, nation of our captivity. They're going to be glad when we depart because the fear of Yahuwah is going to fall upon them. I repeat that. The fear of Yahuwah will fall upon them. And uh, look at Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And Yahuwah shall bring you into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spoken to you, you shall see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you. All right. So the biblical meaning of Egypt is not only bondage, uh, but it is a place of wickedness and oppression. And that's what we are. That's what we are enduring now. That's what we are enduring now. And then verse 39 says he spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light in the night. And verse 40, the people asked, and he brought quails and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. So they had quails and manna. And he gave them quails because they complained. They murmured and complained uh, uh, about all of the food that they had left in Egypt. And so we must be cautious that we don't murmur and complain. And, uh, and uh, I grew up on a hundred, hundred acre farm. And so my, my dad and my brothers would hunt for birds. And so uh, there were doves and, and then there were quails, but of all of the birds, the quails were the cream of the crop. They were the most tasty of the birds. So he gave them the best. Yah gave our ancestors the best. And then the manna, the manna what was what kept them healthy because they brought, they were, they came out uh, without any infirmities and so forth and so on. And, and so the manna uh, is what kept them healthy. They call it angel's food. And uh, and I think I mentioned it before. I, I never uh, brought that video uh, uh, about the manna that's falling in Angola at this time. Uh, they were they 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 were in kind of a famine situation, and so they prayed, and uh, the Most High rained manna on the ground and they all they did all they had to do was come out there are actual actual several videos about the mana in angola all right so let's move on so what does he promise us exodus 15 and 26 is kind of a covenant that he made is part of the covenant uh first thing one of the first things he spoke to them and uh, Yah said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of Yahuwah, your Elohim, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am Yahuwah that heals you. I am Yahuwah that heals you. Hallelujah. This was the promise he made. And so they, none of them got sick unless they disobeyed Moses instructions and they disobeyed the commandments then they, they, there were plagues in the camp, et cetera, et cetera. All right, let's move on. All right, so let's look at Jeremiah because this is the scripture along with others that is that should convince us that we're going to be healed 
as we go out of this wicked nation. Jeremiah 30, beginning at the 10th chapter, reads, Therefore, fear you not, O my servant Yaakov, saith Yahuwah, neither be dismayed, O Yasharal, for lo, I will save you from afar and your seed from the land of their captivity and Yaakov shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet and none shall make him afraid. Now this should, uh, this should uh, uh, comfort us that are praying for our children and our grandchildren because it, it promises us that he will save us and our seed from the land of their captivity. So I'm, I'm, I am in, I am heart encouraged. I am hardened, heartened and encouraged with this scripture because I'm praying for my children and I'm praying for my grandchildren. And so uh, th that they will not be left behind or they will be included in the remnant. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And verse 11, for I am with you, saith Yahuwah, to save you, though I make a full end of all nations, where, whither I have scattered you. Yet will I not make a full end, yet will I will not make a full end of you, but I will correct you in measure and will not leave you all together unpunished. So he's he's saying two things here, that he is going to save, uh, he's gonna uh, save us if we do, if we uh, obey his commands, statutes and laws, but he's gonna make a full end of this nation. I don't care how proud they are. I don't care how many bunkers they've done. They've dug. I don't have, care how many AK-47s, AK, uh, uh, AR-15s that they have, and all kinds of uh, weapons of war. Yahoo says that he is going to make a full end of the nations, of the nations where he has scattered us. And he will correct us in measure. And he won't leave us altogether unpunished. So the best thing to do that we won't be in this group is to return to Teshuva and return to him and obey him with his law, statutes, uh, and so forth. Verse 12, for thus saith Yahuwah, your bruise is incurable and your wound is grievous. There is none to please your cause that you may be bound up. You have no healing medicines. Now, uh, that can that can have that is can be unpacked with several meanings there. Um, our bruise is incurable because uh, well, there's no cure, at least they're not trying to find a cure for some of the things that have plagued us as Yah's chosen people, because they are listed in uh, Deuteronomy 28 verses 15 through 68. And they are they, there are diseases that are particular, particular to us, uh, uh, Yashara. They are particular to us, in fact, uh, there is diabetes, type two diabetes. There is uh, there is um, uh, uh, high blood pressure, and there is uh, arthritis. And we're not the only people group that has those, but they are indeed running rampant. These these diseases are running rampant in our Hebrew family in the seed of, of Yaakov. So there is no, uh, uh, so is there's no cure and your wound is grievous. 
And verse 13, there's none to plead your cause that you may be bound up. You have no healing medicines. There are no medicines. And the, there is a disease that's particular to our people in that sickle cell anemia. And, uh, and, so, um, and so there's no cure for that. But we are, we are encouraged that Yah has the cure. He know he made our body, so he knows exactly what we need. In fact, I um I was reading a scripture uh in Shirak, and it told about and it was speaking of that the cure for diseases is in the ground. The cure for diseases is in the ground. And if I can remember to put it uh, on the in the comments so that you can find it, um, you know, because so many of the medicines that are used in hospitals and in clinics, et cetera, uh, there are so many side effects. In fact, when I was uh, dealing with a uh, uh, pinched nerve and it's, uh, they thought it was in my neck, but it's actually uh, under my shoulder blade and it was very painful. And it is, and Yah is really healing us, you know, and, um, and uh, but some of the medications, for instance, the name of one was gabapentin and, uh, and uh, it had a lot of side effects. I could feel my my limbs and my body starting to swell, and uh, and uh, and uh, I, you know, I have uh, been diagnosed as pre-diabetic, but uh, but uh, that gabapentin kept my blood glucose higher than it than it was originally. In fact, anywhere from ten to twenty points higher. So I talked to my physician and she told me to, to uh, stop taking it. And just as soon as I stopped taking it, all of the excess fluid came out of my body and uh, my blood sugar went down to the normal range under 100. Hallelujah. All praises to the most high. Okay, so let's just continue. So what else? Let's, let's continue with Jeremiah 30. We're talking about what did he promise us? Verse 14, all your lovers have forgotten you. They seek you not for I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one for the multitude of your iniquity because your sins were increased. Now, I remember seeing a little headline on... <clears throat> on YouTube that says, if we're God's, if we're Yahuwah's chosen people, actually said God, then why are we suffering so much? Well, this is the answer to the question. All your lovers have forgotten you and they seek you not for I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy and with the chastisement of a cruel one for the multitude of your iniquity. Now, I, I, I hope that and I pray that you haven't forgotten what iniquity is because I spoke about that on the last lesson that I pre presented. And I was talking about how this one uh, YouTube creator was asked what's the difference in between sin and iniquity. And uh, he said that they were the same, but not according to Strong's Concordance. It, they are not the same. Sin is when we trend, uh, when we break uh, Yah's laws, but iniquity is when we continuously uh, break His laws, and we have a hatred for His commandments and laws and statutes. And like I said, iniquity, uh, when we commit iniquity, it is on a daily basis, habitual basis, and it is uh, iniquity is breaking Yah's laws on steroids. Iniquity is sin, committing sin, but it's on steroids. It's greatly increased, okay? All right, verse 15, why cry you for your affliction? 
your sorrow is incurable for the multitude of your iniquity. Here we have he were here we have it again, a contempt for Yah's laws. And um, and you know, sometimes you know, it's, it's easy to try to figure out a way to break the Sabbath, so the Shabbat, so that we can do what we want to do. You know, in, instead of doing what Yah commanded us to do. So uh, let me read that again. Why cry you for your affliction? Your sorrow is incurable for the multitude of your iniquity. Because your sins were increased, I have done these things unto you. All right? And uh, therefore, all they that devour you shall be devoured. Hallelujah. So all of the people that's, that has been mistreating us has been cruel and hateful and, and have been uh, abusive to us, whether it's verbally by these Karens and calling the police, uh, try to get us arrested, or whether it's physical by the uh, uh, supposedly law, law enforcement. Um, uh, uh, what, whatever it is. And sometimes it's cheating us or denying us of a job opportunity or firing us uh, to hire uh, another one of the, our enemies instead of us. And so, um, and so that's what happens. Therefore, all they that devour you not giving us uh, a, a chance to, to be employed at a high pay, uh, and all they that devour you shall be devoured. And all your adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. And they that spoil you or steal from you, I was looking at something the other day where uh, down in Georgia, it's, uh, they can, it's easy for them to steal people's property or steal the title. And I don't know if there's anything that they can do about it, but I certainly pray that they will get their home returned to them. But this is what is happening. This is what is happening in Georgia. You can actually steal people's houses, all right? But uh, and they that spoil you shall be spoiled. And all that prey upon you will I give for a prey. And I know that it doesn't look like it's going to happen. You know, things are in a slow walk right now. But it's going to be a suddenly when all of this retribution and judgment comes. Verse 17, for I will restore, here it is, I will restore health unto you and I will heal you of your wounds, saith Yahuwah, because they call you an outcast, saying, this is Zion, whom no man seeks after. So we are uh, we are uh, beneath and not above yet, but Deuteronomy 28, one through 14 is gonna be ours. It's gonna be our testimony that we will be above only and not beneath. And we will lend and not borrow. Hallelujah. This, this is just awesome. The promises that he gives, the promises to us. So to encourage you, my beloved brothers and sisters, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. So uh, return and be healed. And, and uh, I would advise uh, uh, you to show this video uh, to those that are, have not to shuva and uh and uh and those who were who in your family or acquaintances are sick listen at, listen at hosea uh 6 and 1 and i think it's i, I think it's correctly pronounced hosea i think but anyway i won't i won't say that that's it because i forgot to check what's the hebrew uh, pronunciation of Hosea. Uh, it reads six and one. Come, 
and let us return unto Yahuwah, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He has smitten and he will bind us up. Okay, how has he torn? He he torn through Deuteronomy 60, I mean Deuteronomy 28 through verse uh 15 through 68. All of that is what has happened to us. And our brothers and sister that sisters that are not in the dia diaspora have been colonized and they have the same. They have the same testimony of all of these sicknesses, et cetera, stealing from them and abusing them or whatever, whatever. So let us return and be healed. So we, we must, Teshuvah, return uh, unto him. Leave these pagan uh, religions that, uh, that uh, uh, were taught to us by our enemies starting out with the slave Bible, which were, was limited information and then uh, lying to us what, what uh, the scriptures were actually speaking and, and uh, translating uh, what they call the New Testament, which is not really a New Testament. It was a renewed covenant. And, uh, and I just found out, uh, and I should have known it as much as I've come across information, uh, that the Catholic Church actually wrote the what, what is called New Testament. And so they made it to their spin, so uh, to their narrative, so they can, uh, they can uh, exalt this white Jesus and have our people uh, bamboozle and deluded uh, that that it, that he was the Messiah, and because uh, I remember when I was growing up, every every older uh, person, uh, and my husband was first pastor, and you go visit the sick or whatever. There was always this picture in the living room of this white Jesus with blonde hair and blue eyes. Okay, and we know that's not the case, but I, I don't know if any of you have noticed it, but now when you see pictures of their Jesus, their, their, uh, their uh, uh, skin is olive tone now. It's olive tone. It's not like burnished bronze as it tells us in Revelation 1, chapter 1. It's an olive tone because it's ridiculous that he was uh, he was non melanated at all. So they start doing that, and some of you may have noticed it too. And then they don't make his hair straight anymore; they make it real curly. So it looks uh, it is is curly, but it's not bone straight like they had it you know, with no curl or whatever. And we know that none of those are depiction, are correct depiction of Yahusha, Yahusha Hamashiach, our savior. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, Psalms 42 in and 11, return and be healed. Return and be healed. And if you look at some of uh, my previous videos about the second exodus and the need to return or teshuva. Uh, 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 teshuva was translated in the Greek to repentance, but it's more than repentance because we've been through that in Christianity where we repent and then there's no structure. We are not taught to obey, obey his laws statutes and commandments and so uh and so that's why many just backslide consistently or uh, whatever but we are to obey his, obey his laws and to keep his feast and to keep his shabbat which is the first feast okay so let's look at psalm 42 verse 11 why are you cast down O my soul and why are you disquieted within me Hope you in Yahuwah, for I shall yet praise him 
who is the health of my countenance and my Elohim. I shall yet praise him. I love Psalm 42. And that is the end of it. But it starts out with, as the deer pants after the water brook, so my soul longs after you. She's talking, the psalmist is, psalmist is talking to Yahuwah. As the deer pants after the water brook, so my soul longs after Yahuwah. Hallelujah. I love that. I love that. I start, I start out with a lot of my quiet time and, and prayer to him, uh, just reciting Psalms 42. And Psalms 40, Psalms 103 reads, bless the Lord, verse two, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. That means we are not to forget his benefits. And verse three reads, who forgives all our lawlessness when we teshuva, when we come to him and we repent and we cry out, our heart is broken over our sins and, and, and we teshuva, we come back to him, return to the covenant, that he cut at Mount Sinai and uh, and uh, uh, and obey his laws. I often say that Yah has not cast aside his those ten commandments, also called the Decalogue, uh, uh, ten commandments that he wrote with his finger on those sapphire tablets to Moshe when Moshe came up to the mountain, okay? So uh, the law is still in effect. This was told, this was taught to us by our enemies because it, the, the, the scriptures weren't written to them or about them. But for us, it is written about us. It's our black history. So now we're getting ready to go into February, which they gave us a, a little month, the shortest month of the, of the year, of the uh, a secular calendar for Black history. And, and, and uh, they've outlawed it in a lot of states. But we are to teach our children. We are to teach our children. No one else. We are to sit them on laps. Read Deuteronomy 6. That is how we are, we are supposed to teach our children to love him with all of our hearts, with all of our souls, and with all of our strength. And, and teach it to our children uh, uh, when we rise up, when we walk along the way. Uh, we are to teach. We are to teach it. You know, not, a, not leave it to uh, our enemies to teach our children or not leave it to someone that, that, that is still asleep to teach our children. We are, the, we, are, we are awakened, so we are more knowledgeable. We are wise now about our history, about what, how we are supposed to compose, our, compose ourselves before Yahuwah, all right? And let's move on to verse uh, two. Uh, bless Yahuwah. Oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities and who heals a little bit of your diseases or a few of them. No, he heals all our diseases. See, this is our promise. We will be healed as we return uh, unto him and keep his laws and commandments and keep his feast and his Shabbat, his holy Shabbat, his holy feast. This uh, healing is ours. Healing is ours. And I really thought that I was stuck with this pinched nerve, uh, uh, but he's healing me. I rarely have pain. Uh, and I, was, I started out with excruciating pain. And I am so grateful. I praise him for healing me. And, and, and he, he promises healing to you. 
He promises that. All right, Proverbs 3, 7 and 9. And it says, and with verse 7, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear Yahuwah and depart from evil. And we know when we can before we uh before we return to covenant and his laws and statutes, you know, there's a lot of people whom we left behind were wise in their own eyes, and then they had the the gall to be sanctimonious. When you're still in this heathenistic um, uh, uh, religion, you're still in there, and there's a lot of, I'm holier than thou, uh, holier than thou rather, uh, back in Christianity. It's a lot of it. And just like I said, uh, the 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 attention all goes to that pastor or that preacher who gets up there, and they and and we know that church uh, was translate was translated from circa the word circa, and it means circus, and so instead of us sitting down and being taught his laws, statutes, and commandments, his Torah. And his Haftorah, which starts at uh, Ruth and goes on to uh, Malachi, and it includes uh, the apocryphal books. Instead of us sitting still, I know we need encouraging also. And sometimes we want to get up and jump and run, and I'm not uh, criticizing that. Because, you know, sometimes you go through so much, brothers and sisters, that you need some of that. But there's a time when we should sit down and be taught. Now, when we get in the wilderness, when we are gathered and we go and we leave, we're not going to have that kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 the jumping and, and the shouting and all of that. We're going to have to sit still and listen and be taught and, and be taught his laws, his ways, his statutes and his commandments. Okay. All right. So uh, let me start that over again. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear Yahuwah and depart from evil. Mm -hmm. And verse eight, it shall be helped to your navel and marrow to your bones. Now, I'm, you know, I'm really, really curious and I, and, and being an, a, a retired educator, I want to make sure that everyone understands what is being said in the scriptures. So I did some research and I looked up the benefit of your navel and bone marrow. Okay. So let's take navel first. Let's take the navel first. Let me uh, uh, move this, minimize it. Okay. So what is the importance of the navel? Dr. Geethi Verma, consultant doctor at Life Wellness says, the belly button is connected to multiple veins in the body as well as to the round ligament of the liver. Unlike any common misconceptions about the non-clinical nature of the nabhi or the belly button, the belly button says quite a lot about the health condition of a person. According to Ayurveda, the, or it could be Ayurveda, Ayurveda, the abdomen is the location of the Agni, which controls digestion, urination, etc. The belly button is the center of the anterior abdomen, where several pathologies, now pathologies are defined, are the science, pathology is defined as the science of the causes and effects of diseases. But uh, 
uh, the belly button is the center of the anterior abdomen, abdomen where several pathologies are manifested, the expert adds. A variety of useful, this is another thing, a variety of useful microorganisms live within the navel, navel or your belly button. The abundance of these microorganisms is an in indicator of the general health and immunity of the individual, explains Dr. Varma. So the belly button is significant uh, uh, and along with being the, uh, uh, the way that uh, we were attached to our mothers at birth. And then of course they severed the umbilical cord, you know, but it's uh, the belly button is in, important. And also reading, I didn't put that here, but we should make sure we keep our belly button clean. Some have belly bu buttons that are uh, uh, even with our stomachs, but some, and some have belly buttons that stick out. And some have belly buttons that are deep inside. It's like a, inside a little hole, a navel hole. But it is important in doing this little short study, it is important that we make sure we have washed our, cleaned our belly buttons as we shower or bathe. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And this is new to me. So um, I, I'm always interested in, in uh, new factual information. Okay. Now, next, what is the importance of the bone marrow? Bone marrow, marrow is the soft, fatty tissue inside of bone cavities. Components of your blood, including red and white blood cells and platelets, form inside your bone marrow. And people have bone marrow transplants. Okay, because they have autoimmune disease that's really, really wreaking havoc on their body. Bone marrow makes nearly all the components of your blood. It's responsible for creating billions of red blood cells daily, along with white blood cells and platelets. Platelets are, are the things that uh, makes our blood clot. Okay, bone marrow also stores fat that turns into energy as needed. Bone marrow makes the components of your blood that you need to survive. Bone marrow produces red blood cells that carry oxygen, white blood cells that prevent infection and plate, platelets that control bleeding. In other words, they make your blood clot so you won't bleed out. The absence of bone marrow can be fatal since it's an essential part of your body. Now I have noticed a fad that has come about in the last, what, two, three, four years, maybe even five, that you can go to a health food store and get bone broth. And so I'm sure that it has some bone marrow in it and so, uh, um, you know, I think I've, I don't think I've ever had any, I may have had some when it first came out, but anyway, this is the importance of bone marrow. I'm going to go back and read that again, just to reiterate, be not wise in your own eyes, fear Yahuwah and depart from evil. This is how we get a healthy navel and, and bones. It shall be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Okay, so let's move forward. And I have some slides of chemicals in our food. Now, while we're over in this Babylon, there's no, there's not too many ways that we can avoid chemicals in our food. Okay, so I just put the uh, the uh, cover slide of the of the uh, video here, and it's entitled "Why Do We Have Chemicals in Our Food?" and and this is done by CNBC, 
and it's on what's wrong with modern food, okay? And it looks like just about everything, all right? So we're gonna, I've got about six or seven of these slides. All right, now, the PFAS, chemicals, poisoning our food, and they're in you, all right? And you see that skull in the middle, and then you have uh, a steak uh, surrounded by vegetables, uh, uh, broccoli, it looks like broccoli, some broccoli uh, sprouts and tomatoes, and it looks like mushrooms. And on the other side, you have a salmon, a salmon rather, uh, steak, and it's surrounded by vegetables also. But no matter how healthy or delicious it looks, it has the PFAS chemicals poisoning your food and mine. Of course, I don't eat beef. I can't do it because it inflames me. And, uh, and uh, salmon, I do eat. Okay, so let's continue. That's, that's uh, the, ti the title is up above these slides. The PFAS, chemical poisoning of our food, they're in you. And also, while I'm talking about this, it is also in our drinking water. It is also in our drinking water. And I think the level was 32, whatever it is, that they have considered it safe. But but anyway, I I I uh my husband and I, we drink uh bottled water out of a water cooler, you know. We drink that and we cook with it. So um, you know, I don't I do we don't use um uh, sink uh the faucet water to make tea or Kool-Aid or whatever else we drink, we use the the uh water cooler, you know, and purified water. All right. Okay, what the title of this slide is what you're really eating. Six worst food chemicals, health, safety, nutrition, detox tips. And nutrition is misspelled. And so I don't know if I copied that or I'll just misspell that word nutrition. Okay, it should be T-I-O-N. All right, if you see these foods, there's uh, the bottle Coca-Cola, uh, Doritos. I'm not talking about the Mexican Cokes, but I'm talking about these that are bottled in the United States. Doritos, Cheetos, Oreos, Pringles, Ruffles. Um, uh, and uh, Twinkies and Chips Ahoy. I don't know how any of you feel, but I used to love Hostess Twinkies. But they don't, when I was a child growing up, but they don't taste anywhere like the t Hostess Twink Twinkies that I grew up with. So so I, I don't eat, I eat very little sweets. If I do eat sweets, there's something, there are sweets, there are cakes or pies that I bake myself and I have I have learned I was using us the one of the most popular brands of pie crust to bake apple pies and peach pies and I, I bake cherry pies and blueberry pies and I just happened to read the label and the ingredients and found out that they put lard in those pie shells and so I was disappointed and so, but it, there's good that came out of it. I learned how to make my own pie dough and it is delicious. I use butter. I use butter and it is flaky and delicious uh, that I use for my pies. Hallelujah. All right. This is another one. And there's two slides. Foods that you would never eat if you knew what's in them. And this looks like a bunch of uh, either beef or pork, rib, bones, or both. And, uh, and it might be, this is for sausages and hot dogs and any kind of, or uh, corned beef hash or whatever, whatever they can grind up. That's why I'm, I, I don't eat canned food because you never know what they put in it. And then they season it and put a little sugar in it. And, you know, we think it tastes good, but just be careful of that. 
corned beef hash and and uh, hot dogs and all kinds of wieners and all of that. Uh, th th this is how, look, look at them. They have a front loader, uh, <laughs> front loader actually uh, uh, bringing and taking them away, all these bones and stuff. Now, my dad refused to, he lived until he was 78 and I believe he would have lived longer, but he smoked. And he, and when I was little, he smoked those uh, filterless cigarettes, Camel and Lucky Strike. And he ended up uh, in his la later days of uh, having emphysema. And so uh, he probably would have lived longer had he quit smoking earlier, you know, or had he never smoked. But he was healthy, but he went to a factory where he saw them making hot dogs. And he would buy them for us, but he would not eat them. And that was our Saturday night uh, uh, meal because my mom had a day off uh, to, from cooking. And so we had hot dogs and pork and beans or beans and franks on Saturday night. All right. Now, to the right of this screen, you can determine what kind of chips they are by the little icon. But I think we've all seen that icon and it's Pringles. And you see how they make it. So we have to be careful because and make sure that we eat clean because we don't even know what's in these foods. All right? Because some of them have uh, uh, chemicals and, and things that we don't even know what they are. Uh, and it's hard to find them. We have to do deep research to find them. All right. And this one says, we are human garbage disposals. Now that looks like a hoagie. Uh, I don't know what uh, restaurant it came from. And then there's the fries on the top. Okay, that looks like a hoagie. And whenever you deal with ground meat, you have you must make sure that you you get it ground yourself, you know, uh, because they that you know I remember reading something and look at the cow. That's funny. The cow is looking like what is all of that they're eating, you know, because they have uh, uh, they put horse meat in there and uh, horse in the uh, uh, the sausage. Well, I hope you don't eat sausages. But horse in everything, anything that's ground, you have to be careful. You have to be careful. Now, I do eat ground turkey uh, uh, that my husband purchases from the uh, uh, commissary on the uh, army base, you know. But uh, I, I just, when I found that out, I don't eat ground beef because it could be mixed up in there with something. All right. Okay, so, but we're human garbage disposals. And just think, the good news is we're going to be able to have clean food and it's going to be kill uh, the, the uh, animals, the cows or so and so forth, is going to be killed in a kosher manner uh, where there's not stress on their bodies as they are uh, slaughtering it, Okay. Okay, and I I eat a lot of uh, vegetables and stuff, so I don't eat a lot of meat at all. All right, and this slide, they want you sick, and they're getting what they want because they are poisoning people in the United States. And I and I didn't put, uh, uh, but you can find that. All you have to do is Google on YouTube. Uh, chemicals in our food, and this one probably will pop up. Okay. All right. So a lot of the food is making us sick. It's giving us cancer. It's giving, you know, uh, so many people have cancer, you know, and we 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 absolutely must follow y'all's dietary laws because I really believe that Pork and shellfish, we are which we are not supposed to eat or consume, are responsible for the cancer that our people have. 
I believe that. I believe that. That's me, but you might believe differently. Okay, look at this. You think this was would be a healthy uh, uh, item to buy. Simply orange. High levels of the toxic cancer-causing chemicals in orange juice. In orange juice, simply orange. It make us, makes us think that it's a really healthy beverage, you know. And so we're probably drinking every, we probably buy it and then uh, drink it every morning. But there's cancer causing chemicals in orange juice. So be careful. If you buy your oranges, make sure you squeeze them yourself into juice. Because orange juice does not look that opaque. Uh, you know, orange juice is, is kind of clear. It's the, got a little orange tint, tint, but we have to be careful. All right. Now, so um, return to Yaz Terry Laws. And there's a lot, before we go there, there's a lot of food that use chemicals that are banned in, um, in uh, Europe in other countries, they are actually banned. And would you believe there are some that are banned in China, believe it or not. Okay, and also the FDA, I had one and I failed to put it because I had to leave, uh, leave my work and then come back and I forgot it. But uh, FDA has not checked levels of toxins in 10 years. I had one that said that. And a lot of these companies are, are lobby Congress and everything because uh, you remember that uh, verse where Yahusha said, uh, don't worry about what you eat, what you drink and what you're gonna wear because that's what the Gentiles do. In other words, the Gentile will do anything to make a diet. That's what he was saying I'm in my translation, in my understanding. And they don't care how many people, these corporations don't care how many people they harm as long as they are able to make money and make money. Okay, so let's move on. Now, we first of all, we must, must make sure we return to Yah's dietary laws and follow them uh, religiously. Follow his dietary laws, and they are found in Leviticus 11. It tells us everything that, that is clean and, and, and uh, that Yah, the most high, calls food. And everything that's unclean, he doesn't even call them food. All right? And then, uh, uh, then some tips, eat foods that are close to their original form. For instance, Orange, it's like I mentioned, orange juice. You know, you can squeeze the juice out of the orange and then just eat the pulp inside. That, that's the original form. Read labels to see what's in packaged food and then take time to see what they are. And I, you know, after I began following the dietary laws, I was still using pie crust. I was so positive that they were not, they were using something like Crisco or something, but I was so shocked to find they were putting lard in pie crust. Okay. Grow your own food. My husband and I have a nice garden outside uh, and we are not any under any HOA rules. So we expanded our garden. I, I, I ordered uh, some uh, low fence, white picket fence fencing and we uh, fenced it in and it looks really nice. You know, it's not an eyesore and we have collards and we have uh, uh, turnips and uh, we had we have broccoli, we have cabbage. And uh, before it got really cold, we had peppers and bell peppers and I have spinach out there. And so that you can grow your own, you can, on YouTube, you can find container gardens. If you have a patio, you can grow your own food. You know, you can't do it now because it's freezing temperatures. 
but uh, you can grow your own food. Grow your own food. There's lots and lots of tips in doing that. And avoid fast foods. Those are the ones that they try to make. Remember how, how if you get a happy meal, or not a happy meal, but uh, uh, you get two hamburgers and with fries for $5, I wouldn't touch them with a 10-foot pole because uh, are you going to get real beef ground? Avoid processed foods and also, and make your own snacks. You can just slice, you can get a slicer if you don't want to just sit there and slice. Make your own potato chips. My husband made potato chips and we we just spray uh, avocado oil or olive oil uh, on them and put them in the air fryer. They're delicious. They taste a whole lot better than uh, 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 bought potato chips. And popcorn, you, you know you can make your own popcorn. Cookies and everything else you can do to keep your body as healthy as possible, okay? All right, so uh, that's what I wanted to. So I wanted to show you this video. It's not long, but I want to show you this video. And uh, I, have, I have recently subscribed to this channel, Bantu Children of Israel. This is wickedness pure. And then it's this is what we're up against. No wonder we are sick. And you think, uh, you know, most African countries don't allow all these chemicals in their foods because you have so many people that are farming and they are doing, uh, doing it the right way. Okay, but I want to show this and then we'll be done. Uh, I'm going to show this right quick. Let's see if it'll play. This is in South Africa. Look at that. See how that uh, green plant is, is coming from winter to flowering? And they're injecting our the tubal vegetables. And we see who's doing all this. Jesus, uh, Jesus, not supposed to burn like that. And the right. Uh, and the right, hold on a minute. I want to uh, go back. Because natural cheese is not supposed to burn. It melts, but it's not supposed to burn. And I'm going to stop it because you might, it might be going too fast. And that looks like some kind of melon that they're injecting. Okay. Nothing is safe. And they're dumping it in some kind of chemical to keep it fresh. That's to keep it fresh. That's to keep it fresh. And this was a withered, almost dead uh, green bush. And look how it's coming out. There they go again. Injecting a cucumber or an avocado, not an avocado. Uh-oh. Hold on. Let's go back. Okay. Or an avocado. Let me see where I, I stopped. Let me go forward. Okay. A cucumber or a strain. Just 
Jesus not supposed to do that when you put a, 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 a match under it, a lit, lit match. See, natural cheese that's melt. And they're putting plastic, they're putting plastic in the rice. That, that's what they're doing. And the, look at the baby food. Contains washing powder. Look at milk. Is there rice water in and mixed seaweed? You know, this is happening in Africa. Pure milk. Okay, okay. So I just wanted to show you that, and uh, I know that the the uh, uh, on Harvest Men. Back uh, about three months ago, or four, maybe more, uh, on Harvest Men, she was uh, she was speaking and saying that, um, and saying that uh, we need to detox, uh, and this was uh, uh, part of her prophecy that we need to de detox our bodies. So. Um, it's going to be good when we leave this country and uh, and uh, we go home where we can have healthy food that we can grow ourselves, healthy vegetables and healthy fruits and uh, and and healthy cattle and sheep and goats or whatever, you know, it's going to be good. So that's it for me, beloved. Uh, and I hope that you have gleaned something out of this. And, uh, and this helps you to, to get uh, at least some uh, little ways in having a healthy body. But just be careful and make sure that you are eating um, that you are eating according to Yah's dietary laws. Hallelujah. All right. Well, we're going to pray and then uh, uh, speak the parting blessing on you. Father, how, are, how wonderful you are. You are just awesome. Oh, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You are awesome and your name is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Your name, Yahuwah, is to be praised. And we just ask that you will be glorified in our eating habits, that you will be glorified from the time we open our eyes until the time we close them uh, at night. We, you be glorified and we want to be pleasing. And Father, we are anticipating having healthy food, healthy drinking water, and uh, healthy uh, meats. We're just anticipating because you are good and everything you do is good. And we love you with all of our hearts, all of our souls, and all of our mights in Yahushua's mighty name. And now, Yahushua, bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. Love you, beloved family, and go in the shalom of the Most High, Yahuwah. Hallelujah, and I am out. Shalom. <laughs>